for the sides for this UEFA Cup tie. The parkhead capacity reduced to 23,000 to comply with ground regulations. That's what's made all the difference. The three foreigners rule means no places in the Celtic side for Englishman Tony Mowbray and Stuart Slater. For the return for Mike Galloway, who missed Saturday's match against Hearts, and Gary Gillespie for his first start of the season. That is, Dubček is on the bench, and the other non-Scots are Pat Bonner in goal and striker Andy Payton, who hasn't played because of injury since the first leg in Bern. Despite that being his only start of the season before tonight, seven appearances as substitute have yielded five goals. He'll partner Jerry Craney up front. Only three full internationals in that young boys lineup: the skipper Martin Weber, midfieldman Georg Bregi, and striker Adrian Kuntz. Winning number 11 is 18-year-old Australian youth international Paul Agostino. And Luca Ippoliti, the Italian-born midfield player, is just 19. The most experienced performer is 35-year-old Georg Bregi, who scored in both World Cup qualifiers for Switzerland against Scotland. And the referee is from Holland, Mr. Jan van Vliet. The match is underway in front of this rather sparse crowd by European standards. It's capacity all right, but that's only 23,000 tonight because of the ground regulations. And that really has made things rather eerie inside the stadium for the start of this vital European match for Celtic. Remember playing with numbers on their backs because we're in a European tie. And looking very quickly around to establish the makeup of the Celtic defence in particular, they've moved Mark McNally to right back, there's an offside decision against Kuntz breaking from midfield. But Celtic have Mark McNally winning five but playing it right back. Gary Gillespie and Mike Galloway are in the centre of the defence and Tom Boyd is back to his international position at left back. So there have been some further reorganisation of the... Celtic rank switching Pat McGinley here to the left of the midfield. Here's Boyd. Playing it early, but it's an easy clearance. There's Mark McNally. Forward goes Boyd again. He won't get to that though. Ahead of Reich. And it's a goal kick to young boys. Boyd, I'm sure, will be very happy to have this opportunity to play at his more accustomed position at left back. Challenge again by McNally. Here's Moza. McNally's interception again. Craney. Showing good close control. This is Peter Grant. Support coming from Galloway. Celtic sending men forward in numbers. Very well driven by Galloway. Fully 35 yards out. Was treated with respect by Peter Cobal and goal. I'm sure does not reflect anything happening here at Celtic Park, but rather something happening far away in Bulgaria, I suspect. The Celtic supporters erupting all around the stadium. There's certainly nothing to bring that about from the play and evidence here at the moment. Good boy. Good run forward by McGinley. Boyd is supporting inside. Peyton through the middle. Peyton blocks the ball clear. Weber was in the way. This is O'Neill. Fine ball wide for Craney. I almost found O'Neill with the ball into the gap. chanting around the stadium again directed towards Celtic's deadly rivals Rangers very confident play there by Weber the captain 14 years he's been with young boy Saban this is Moza Stay forward, 
fearless one from Peyton. This is Bregi. Young boy so dangerous in the break like this. Kuntz going through, and the offside flag was up. The Celtic really do have to beware of those swift breaks by the Swiss. Adrian Kuntz clearly unhappy about that. It must have been a very close decision indeed. Galloway, an awkward one there for Weber, breaks to McGinley, it's a good effort, a dipping volley there for Pat McGinley, he scored 14 times from midfield for Hibs last season, only two so far for Celtic, but this wasn't far away. McNally's head up into midfield, it goes for McGinley, chested down for McStay, off goes Boyd again, but you'll see how well that's been handled now by the young boys defence, here's Peyton, and Boyd! Plays with such strength and energy, Tom Boyd. So much more comfortable in the attacking sense today, Rick. In that attack here on the left, and he got a break of the ball there, almost twice, leaning back for the shot. to stoppage time at the end of the first half which has not been satisfactory at all from the Celtic point of view Bregi now striding forward the space here for young boys and that deflection could have been menacing is the time for the corner so here's Adrian Kuntz who attempted that shot at goal with the corner Chance now to send the ball in. And a golden opportunity there for Stroin. What a disaster that might have been for Celtic. Hugo Stroin left on his own inside the area there. It's the last action of the first half. And what a let off this is for Celtic. The Blues as Celtic depart tell the story. It's been a tense, nervous performance in the first 45 minutes. And Celtic certainly have not been able to flow young boys have been very difficult opponents and this match remains very much in the balance it's Celtic nil young boys of Bern nil so the Dutch referee says it's underway for this vital second half of this European tie for Celtic they didn't have it all their own way by any means in the first half indeed they struggled for long phases of the match with this 3-5-2 formation always difficult to settle the three at the back there McNally, Gillespie and Galloway five in the middle O'Neill, McStay, Grant, McGinley and Boyd with Peyton and Trini up front the Joe Jordan influence but that's apparent there because he liked to play three at the back as manager of hearts certainly with uh, young boys only playing two up front it's understandable Tactical decision there. Liam Brady now down beside Joe Jordan on the track. Played in there by McStay. The header was by Weber. There's Gillespie getting up again. And inevitably, virtually in Europe, a free kick awarded against the tall man in the box. Gillespie penalised. Here's Galloway coming forward. That's O'Neill. Beautifully cleared there by Rod Setter. A chance on here for Peyton. Good goalkeeping by Cobell. What's it battling hard again? Played out by Weber. Free kick's been given for the tackle by Paul McStay. Well, Peter Cobell was very quick and deep coming off his line to face Andy Peyton there. As good a chance as Shelley got had in the match so far. Trini screening the ball from his marker. Stroin. Here's Paul McStay. Weber did well to block the cross. There's that under pressure there from O'Neill. This is McStay. Determined defending there by the Swiss. Battling play also by Paul McStay. That's a good cross. And a good chance there for Jerry Craney. Ball is still in play here. Kept in by McGinley for Boyd. Here's Peter Grant. Now Gillespie. Beautifully tackled by Weber. Two senior citizens on the respective sides there doing well. Molder on the break. Well read by Galloway. Well, 
young boys in three up there in that move. Here's Jerry Craney. Peyton made the run. Pass is just out of reach. Well, that opportunity a moment ago created by the determination of Paul McStay, who battled so hard here to win a series of tackles to get the ball back and whip over a very good cross for Craney and that glancing header going wide. Oh dear. Next day. Gap to go through, linking with Peyton. Was it again his marker doing a good job? Go through the Peter Grant for Celtic. Watch the ball again. Craney. That's a good turn by Craney. He's held by Stroy. Now that surely was a penalty kick. Well, it may have been the blind side of the referee, but certainly not of the linesman. Hugo Stroy in here, guilty and certain of holding Jerry Craney on that turn. That's great play by Craney. Now he's given no chance to go for Look at that. A clear penalty kick. Swinging corner kick, causing problems. And still at one run for O'Neill. Played away calmly in the end by Bragi. And Celtic now getting in vocal encouragement. They've been right out of luck there. There's McNally, a looping cross, looking for Gillespie. Way by Stroyne. That's Boyd. Now O'Neill. possession all the time. Good ball in by McNally. Here in the air by Stroin. There's Gillespie. Craney. Back to Gillespie. That's Bragi back in defence. There's McNally. Rather ambitious perhaps. With some concerted attacking here by Celtic. And from that corner kick, the goalkeeper in trouble clearly. Still no way through as the young boys players pack the defence. Good header by Galloway, but it's picked up by Bauman. Looking up there from Inley. Here's Bregi. Danger on now for Celtic. That's a fine pass. Agostino with Moza free in the middle. There's Moza. And the ball bouncing clear there from Pat Bonner. Kuntz had a chance. Clearly didn't expect it, but what a fine move it was, Agostino it was, out on the right there, Moser had all the space in the world where the ball was whipped in, and that could so easily have been the stunning goal for our young boys. <laughs> Moser on his own, waiting in the middle, and Bonner appeared to do well initially, then dropped it, and Kuntz really should have scored. Agostino did all the damage though with that run on the right. This corner kick, the pace of the match has certainly increased dramatically in the last five minutes. Next day. Well, still to open his account for the season. Missed a great chance against Rangers last week, and this certainly was by no means easy, but he would have expected, I think, to hit the target. And enough time to take a touch there, but chose to drive the ball. Well, he's been working tirelessly in midfield, Paul McStay, trying to open up this young boy's defence. Celtic have in reserve. But Gordon Moss the goalkeeper. Love check, Barry Smith. Two strikers, Frank McAvinney and Charlie Nicholas, neither of whom are fully fit, I think. There's Kuntz with a shooting chance. A great save by Bonner. That might keep Celtic in Europe. Management there for McNally from Galloway. A good play by Kuntz and a fine save by Pat Bonner. Inside is Kuntz. Boy, he's strong enough there to hold off Agostino. He's a huge gap to race into ahead. Assessing all the options around but choosing to go into that gap. It's a good cross, there's Trini, now Peyton. And he's denied by the post. 
Well, Andy Payton can't believe that. He remains so calm inside all that mayhem. Tom Boyd did all the good work there. Trainee's header. There was Payton. You see him staying up, trying to prod that away from the keeper. Trainee. It's throwing. The wrestling goes on. Stroin is penalised. At that time, I have to confess, I had more sympathy with him. Kenny backing in, standing his ground, making life difficult for the defender. Deliver this free kick. Oh, it's scrambled off the line. There's the overhead effort now. In goes Gillespie, or O'Neill rather. Back with Galloway. There's Peyton. McStay brings it down, tries a snapshot. Well, what the effort that from Paul McStay. Well, Celtic again coming so close. The free kick from Charlie Nicholas right over to the far post. Challenge in there, sending it right into the danger area where Rod said that they're just enough to scramble the ball away. Played long by McNally. Baber on the end of it again. Nicoliti. Baber. Breaks from Kuntz. O'Neill, that's good play from Celtic, gives McStay back to O'Neill, promising build-up, McNay has it, McStay has it again, into the gap it goes for Nicholas, now Kenny, the best move of the match from Celtic, what a finish that would have been, brilliant build-up play, a succession of passes all the way up the right flank, then McStay to Nicholas, back there to Kenny, and the shot goes high, Peyton's header, that's Kenny, Nicholas, Weber was in the way, back with Grant, and this is Boyd, could be the last attack of the 90 minutes, checks inside, Nicholas, and once again it's off the post, Nicholas can't believe it, good play again from Tom Boyd, checking inside, he spotted Nicholas, look at this for first touch control, then the shot, and off the outside of the post. No chance there for Boyd coming forward. Brady in trouble. And the final whistle goes. We're facing extra time now. The Dutch referee indicating that we'll have 30 minutes of extra time. A change made by Celtic for the start of extra time. Darius Dubček has come on and it looks as though he has replaced Gary Gillespie so the Dutch referee prepares to take us into extra time remember the possibility of penalty kicks to come if the sides can't find the net in this 30 minute period Agostino good change of pace over carrying the ball, allowing Galloway to make that tackle. Bauman. Nicoliti. Bauman again. Hasn't been seen much in a creative role in the match. That's a good pass. Agostino. And great positioning there by Pat Bonner. Made that look so easy. And Agostino appears to have damaged the muscle there. Boyd to McStay. Here's Dubcek. Swiss quite content to allow the Celtic back to their possession again. I'm sure they're well aware of Dubček's shooting power, mind you, when he comes near their box. Drawing again, leaning in with that tackle on Craney. Tackle came from Ippolito, uh, Ippoliti, and the result is a corner kick to Celtic. Ippoliti was complaining there to the linesman. That's awkward, it's off the other side of the ball from Trady. And still it will not go for Celtic. Jerry Trady coming into the far post. Goalkeeper was stranded. There's Galloway. Ippoliti has possession again for young boys. Telling it well for Bregi. Rod Setter. Giving that straight to Paul McStay. Here's Trady. The unlucky man again. Stroin goes across. 
Steelers won once more from the same player. Front setter. Here's Charlie Nicholas. Into the gap it goes for Peyton. It's an own goal. Tensions of Baybert on McStay. And Nicholas comes across. Referee checking his watch. Now don't be too surprised here at Charlie Nicholas, who's going to get a lecture from the referee. Don't be surprised if Nicholas plays this behind the goal. Well, keeping it at the corner flag. That's the other way to take some time over. Right over to the far side it goes. That's out of play, quite deliberately. Allows Celtic to regroup on the centre line to face any counter-attack. Wouldn't risk a ball played into the area to be headed clear. And it's now looking safe for Celtic. We're past the, the half-hour of extra time mark now. It's injury and stopping time. The referee is adding on. There can't be much of that. All eyes now on the Dutch referee. And the final whistle goes. Celtic have made it. The invention there displayed by Charlie Nicholas in extra time has won the tie for Celtic. It's been very difficult all night. But look at the way he won this game. There was Paul McStay playing it inside. Now Nicholas has Peyton ahead. Tries to play that delightful ball inside Bowman. And it's New. His goalkeeper. But what a great pass it was from Nicholas. Celtic hit the post at two occasions, and he painted. But there should have been a penalty kick for a foul by Stroin on Trainey. There appeared to be no luck at all for Celtic all night until that closing moment in extra time. But Charlie Nicholas's creative pass won the match for Celtic. And Celtic won. Young boys of Burnley. Liam, it all turned right for you in the end, but uh, how do you feel about the overall performance? Well, uh, forget about the first 45 minutes. I think we struggled badly. Um, our nerves got to us. Uh, thankfully, second half, they came out and they were a bit like they, they can be, and uh, they got about the Swiss team. And they made chance after chance after chance. Uh, and finally, we got the break in the end with a bit of inspiration for Charlie Nicholas. What was the approach beforehand? Because your tactics were different for tonight's match. Yeah, well, we had to shuffle things about with uh, three, um, three non-Scots. Uh, we were limited there. We were limited with injuries. Um, McAvenny, Peyton and Creaney uh, playing not really in condition. N Nicholas has come on. He's still feeling his ribs, but we had to put him on to try and open them up. Um, so we decided to play three at the back and push people on, uh, especially Tom Boyd. Uh, and I thought he did that very, very well tonight. It took a long time, though, to start opening up the Swiss defence. Did you have the feeling it was never going to happen for you? 
Oh, I thought second half, uh, once began, uh, we began to apply uh, the pressure we can. Uh, and we were very, very unlucky. Uh, the woodwork stopped us from scoring at least three times. And uh, I thought we should have had a penalty when Creaney was brought down. And there's one cleared off the line with Boyd. Uh, so you think, well, it might go to penalties. We were, Joe and I were working out who we, who we were going to have as our penalty kickers uh, because we made so many changes during the game. And uh, as I say, a bit of inspiration from Nicholas. Uh, good ball inside for Peyton. And uh, the lad was, uh, was in uh, two minds and he told poked it into the net. You mentioned nerves at the start and it certainly looked to be a nervous first half performance. Is this a very important victory, do you think, for the Celtic season? Well, we wait and see. We wait and see. Um, you need a bit of luck in football. We haven't been having it. Um, I'm loath to say we got it tonight because we, we got what we deserved tonight. We deserved to win, uh, but we had a little bit of luck as well to get us through. Well done indeed. Thanks very much, Dean. Super. So good.